So once we've got that shape, we're going to set. Uh, you can see we've got the shape now, and it's got that slightly soft edge. Fades away nicely. So we're going to change the ink settings now. I'm going to change that to add. That kind of burns out quite a bit, but we'll see. We're going to adjust several bits and pieces here. We're going to adjust the brightness and contrast of this chappy. Now, don't forget what we're doing is if we um, anything that's white will rise up, and anything that's black will be sort of embedded into the scene. So. Maybe adjust that a little bit so that it's not quite so, quite so crazy. But we're still making nice and nice and bright. Okay, we're going to create one more layer now. We're going to create another new solid, and let's make it black this time. And what we're going to do is, we're going to use this solid to create a mask around the background. So we'll just select that now. I'm going to do this very quickly. Obviously, if you were doing this. If you're doing this properly, you would spend a bit more time creating a mask. It was a wee bit nicer than this. I'm just being very, very rough working around this gentleman's face. He's actually looking a little bit bored. So let's go up here. Oop, put that down there. Oop, oop. Down there. Okay. And then we can switch that back black on again. And let's have a look at the mask. And we'll probably feather that as well. Maybe about 40 pixels. Something like that. And then what we'll do is we'll adjust the transparency. Down now we want to keep a little bit in there just to get a little bit of difference happening. But you know, put the opacity up to that. That's not too bad. Okay, so we're we're kind of getting a, a bump map here. Uh, we're a bit worried about this here, but, but let's let's try something and see how we go. Okay, we're doing to go do one more layer here. We're going to add an adjustment layer, and on this adjustment layer, we are going to blur everything here. So we'll just do a, a fast blur. Where's my fast blur? Fast blur. Take up something like that. See how that works out. Maybe that's maybe a bit much. We want to keep a bit of detail just for something, but you know, let's try that. Let's try that and have a look. So, without further ado, back to this guy. Hopefully, we've not lost you there. That was a bit. Uh, that was a bit tough getting this displacement map. But if we quickly run over that, so we've got the actual video um, at the bottom, which is now blurred, and we made. A slight adjustment to brightness and contrast. We then did a circular ramp that um, is highlighting the face. Okay, let's do a start of the ramp there. Yeah, I'm just checking. Um, and then we did a black sort of solid that's masking out the background. Again, these are all soft edges. And then with everything, we we gave it a blur. Now, if we go to the left view, I can actually switch that off. But in the s on that uh, clip itself, we can add the displacement map. So here we go. Displacement map. We'll pop it on there. And what we want to do is we'll select the displacement map. We're going to use the luminance um, for that. That's for the uh, horizontal. Because don't forget, we only change the horizontal. We don't change the vertical because what we're wanting is. We want the difference left to right. We don't actually need it to change up and down. Now let's just have a little look. Oh, there we go. Look at that. You can certainly see his face moves. It's a couple of bits look a little bit strange, but you know we're definitely creating uh, an alternative view of his face there, which is exactly what we need. So uh, now let's have a little drum, uh, a little drum roll, and get our uh, 3D glasses on, so we can actually have a look at it. And now we can pop back over to our to our anaglyph uh, view. We can we can lock that, and what we're going to do is we'll come back to this left view now. At the moment, we've only set it to five. In fact, if you switch it off, you'll see Mr. 
Man is completely flat. Switch it on. Let's try something crazy, like something like 20. Oh no, we've gone the wrong way. Tell you what we want to do. I'm gonna go to minus 20. Go to minus 20 and... Yeah, it's not too bad. Maybe something a bit less, minus 12. Uh, let's try minus 15. Minus 15, I would say we've definitely got a three dimensionality about his face now. We can go further on and you can see his, see his face going a bit crazy there. Um, you can definitely see his face has got a nice rounded shape to it. I think there's still a little bit of messing around we could do with that displacement map. We can maybe try blurring it a little bit more. That might soften some of that harshness. I still definitely see we've got his face sticking out and it's nice and rounded and it's rolling back to his ears in the background there. Um, again, you just have to adjust it to really to please yourself till it looks about right to you. Uh, the black solid is certainly fine. Face bump, we could uh, we could adjust the opacity of that and see what that does. Let's take it up. You can certainly see the effect once you put it up to 100%. If you take it down to 50%, you can see the difference that, that creates. Unless that's just adjusting the displacement map. And the scene itself, we can adjust uh, the brightness and the contrast of that. And if you actually just watch what happens, it's a matter of getting it to the level for each shot that you're actually happy with. Now, on that as an example, I'm actually pretty happy with that. If I go back to the anaglyph, I'm pretty happy that I've generated from a from a 2D piece of footage, I've actually generated something in three dimensions that I'm pretty happy with. It may not be, I mean, it's obviously not going to be Avatar. Uh, you know, shooting something in 3D is obviously quite different from uh, from generating it. But if you have a look at that, I would say that's, that's pretty reasonable. We've got real big rounded-faced man with his head sticking out there, perhaps a little bit grotesquely. Um, but I, I would definitely say that um, for the few minutes that we've spent with it, I'm pretty happy with those results. And uh, hopefully you are too. Uh, hopefully I, I explained as we went through that the displacement map is a little bit more complicated. If you actually look at the displacement map on its own, we'll switch that off. Um, effectively, that's all you're looking at. But you can see the you can see the sort of areas and the, the way that the um, the dark is being pushed back. Obviously, we've we've gone quite far in our adjustments there. So you know you might want to flatten it a little bit and make it not quite so extreme. There's all sorts of stuff you can do. You have you have the the basics now. Don't pull that face. Look, I've just shown you how to do this. Quit complaining. Um, anyway, uh, that's the third part. We've only got one more. Um, of these tutorials, which will show um, really uh, a bit more use of this and a slight variance um, in the displacement mapping. But uh, again, it's all very, very interesting stuff, and uh, I hope you, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you'll find some time to come over to enhancedimensions.com and take a look around. We've got all sorts of 3D goodies and freebies. And it'd be great to see you. So, until next time, this is Andrew Murchie for Enhanced Dimensions. Bye now.